everyone, Joel Anthony here. Today we're at a restaurant called Selva Maya. Selva Maya in Valladolid, Valladolid, Mexico. So huge thanks to our friend Alex, guys. He's the one that he wanted me to do a video for him. We're doing a video for him. So thank you, Alex, for this meal today. So what we got, guys, is uh, it's quite a menu. So we got like the appetizers coming. It's like a shareable plate. Um, then basically we have uh, this is the rest of the menu. This is the main dishes. This is the uh, app. I, I like I'll call them salads, I guess. Um, so to start off, I had. Uh, two orders of steamed vegetables. I also ordered um, one of the cochinita pibil, which is like a seasoned pork. It's a very uh, Yucatan dish. I then have a pollo pibil, which is the chicken, just kind of cooked similarly. Um, really nice spices, really nice flavor to them. I ordered three of the chicken and moles, because that sounds delicious. <laughs> and uh, I got one of the uh, pork chuck as well. So lots of good stuff. Our appetizers are arriving right now. So let's dig on in. I'm excited. This looks really, really good. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're at Selva Maya, guys, having a real, authentic Mexican cuisine experience. So super excited to be here, guys, having what was going to be an all-we-can-eat and unlimited amount of authentic Mayan and or Mexican food. So to start off, we had uh, basically every one of the appetizers that they offered. So we had what I, I again, my pronunciations, please excuse them, but it was like caídas. Um, then we had fried pumpkin, we had catatoes, cat, 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 catatoes, uh, we had refried beans, and then we had fried plantains. So all were pretty good. Um, the way I would describe them, so there's like the little fried pumpkin bits, um, which I had uh, my hand on right now. Um, they also gave like some guac and stuff, uh, a little bit of chips, which was great. Um, we had the uh, refried beans, um, we had the plantains, and then here we had the um, little like, I don't, like, I would kind of describe it more like a uh, tacos dorados, but that's not what they're calling it. But basically it was just like a deep fried tortilla. There might've been a little bit of something in it and there's a little bit of sauce on it. I was just using it to like eat the refried beans. Um, the I also had a, uh, a green salad here and then I ordered to start um, two orders of steamed vegetables. I ordered three entrees of the chicken mole, the uh, chicken and mole, I ordered three of those. Then I ordered a pork chuck, which is like a pork chop. And then I ordered a uh, chicken, or sorry, a uh, uh, cochinita pabil, which is like, kind of like a braised, well, not braised, but it's like a shredded pork. So it looks like pulled pork. That's not the flavor by any means, um, but it is a very delicious pork, almost kind of cooked in a chili sauce. Um, the cochinita pabil was one of just like my favorite, I would say, um, dishes, whether it be tacos, um, etc., that we ever came upon in Mexico. And it's very much a Yucatan uh, kind of a thing, right? So here we are in Yucatan province in Valle de Lid. Um, and so cochinita pabil is very, very suiting. Um, but yeah, anyway, so they got all the appetizers. They're all pretty solid. The uh, plantains here. Um, was kind of a traditional setting where it's served with like a cream on it. Um, it's like a little bit of a sweet cream, almost kind of like a yogurt sauce, I'd call it in a way. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's pretty cool. Um, Got to try all those things. And uh, now on to kind of the more uh, entrees. So here's the uh, cochinita pabil. This is the shredded pork that I was talking about. And it was very good. Um, definitely very heavy. Uh, no shortage of, nat you know, either naturally and or added fats, oils. 
Um, it came with uh, some lovely little uh, like pickled onions, um, which was a nice flavor. Um, I had this green salad as well, so I'm diving into that. I'm all about that health, guys. I definitely think you should eat your vegetables, um, and I always make a point of definitely doing so. So along with the entrees, I was given um, a thing of tortillas. I'm not sure if it was specifically set for the uh, Cochinita Pabil, and that was somebody coming over saying hello, saying, hey, are you on YouTube? Which I always love when people come say hello. So if you ever see me out and about, please come say hi. I would love to give you a picture, love to give you a card. And uh, yeah, awesome. But uh, yeah, Cochinita Pabil, um, I, that, this one I just ate by itself because um, it was very, very good. I liked it a lot. Um, here is the pork chuck. Um, so this is basically like a pork chop, more or less, um, which was good. It was grilled. Um, the pork itself was not overly flavored, but I really liked the little kind of um, vegetable, I don't know, almost like a, I don't want to say like a bubba ganoush, like almost like a little eggplanty, you know, whatever f cooked vegetable side that also came with it. Uh, which I was eating right there and like I said it was solid like I had no complaints it would be very like it was very comparable and uh, definitely of the quality to something you would get at a North American restaurant um, he then here got the uh, the moles coming so the chicken and mole if you're not familiar with mole mole is such a unique item um, I had mole uh, the last time I was in Mexico and I really enjoyed it so I wanted to get it again um, but here we have the uh, chicken pabil. So this is the um, chicken version of the pork pabil, um, which the chicken version was good. Again, kind of a chicken cooked in kind of a chili-ish sauce. Um, very tender, very moist. It just fell apart, definitely fell off the bone. I did notice that the pieces I got with this dish were very, very bony and quite small. Um, the one was a thigh and then the other one was, I'm not really even sure what it was. It was kind of like maybe part of a breast piece. Um, it was kind of interesting. It did come with uh, um, a little bit, again, and all the dishes kind of came with a little bit of a side, more or less, um, to the extent I ate it. Well, you know, it kind of depend on what it was, um, but I do like coleslaws and I do like that kind of salad. Um, so here we have the, uh, again, the chicken amole with the uh, plantains. This was served with plantains and a little bit of rice. I'm not a big rice person. I understand some people mix it in with the sauces and stuff. Hey, you can do you. I'm going to do me. Um, so I figured I'd just eat this chicken with my hands. It was the easiest way to do it. Um, and the portions of chicken was better in the mole compared to the uh, the chicken pabil. Um, this mole, it wasn't bad. I will say it wasn't the best mole I had. The, it was um, not very sweet. Um, this way I'll describe So mole is a sauce which generally has chocolate in it, which is, sounds really, really weird. But what's nice about it is because it has a really, it, it's seasoned well, it's spices, um, not spicy, but spices. And usually having that little bit of chocolate in there adds a bit of a chocolate flavor, adds a uh, you know really nice sweet dynamic. That being said, with this one, I noticed it was not very sweet. And I would almost say you didn't get that chocolate note. Like traditionally when I've had mole in the past, the there was like a little bit of a chocolate-ish note flavor in the background. And with this mole, I wasn't necessarily getting it. I definitely agree in the texture, in the mouth feel, in all those aspects. It definitely, like it seemed like a mole 100%. I just really wasn't getting that end sweet chocolate note, which I have experienced in some of the other moles. And so, again, it's just preference, though. Whereas I preferred the mole with a little bit of chocolate, that sweeter note. I know some people don't. In fact, why some people don't like mole is because there's chocolate in it. Um, eating with my hands was very, very messy, but it was definitely the way to do it. Um, but I needed some more napkins. That was for sure. Um, so I got, again, some of the steamed vegetables. So the steamed vegetables were literally just steamed vegetables like obviously they look just like a carrot broccoli cauliflower which you'd get out of a frozen container but that's totally fine that's basically what I expect it and that's definitely what these were um, at this point like I said I did start with ordering the three chicken and moles um, which like I said I was really I, I loved mole when I had it before this one it was solid wasn't quite what I was feeling um, like I said with the differences in the sauces as I explained but as far as it being cooked and prepared like again the chicken very very moist juicy tender everything was fall off the bone so really I have to give a huge credit to the uh, the quality of the food all of these dishes were coming out 
with excellent quality. I will say I had a very, very long, long, long lull at the start there between the appetizers and all of these um, entrees. So I was very worried that I was going to be getting slow played it. But I will say once the entrees started coming and basically like from this order, um, things kept up at a really nice pace, which I was so thankful for um, because I figured like it was it was going to be, I thought it was going to be long. Um, and I was on a little bit of a time limit. I had to get back. Not only was this place closing in maybe like an hour and a half or so, but uh, we were leaving, uh, I believe the next day, leaving via Delete, and we had a number of different things to do. So after I had my vegetables again, guys, big advocate of vegetables, eat your vegetables. I went back to the uh, Cochinita Babel, um, which, like I said, I really liked. They did have um, a, like one kind of salsa there, um, which I ate and used it all um like right here um it was uh kind of a i don't like i call it a mix between a traditional salsa verde with maybe a little bit more of a uh how a habanero to it so kind of like a spicy salsa verde whereas you know like the salsa verde generally have like some avocado in it or at least the green tomatoes um sometimes they're a little thicker and this one met all that criteria but they were like picante picante like spicy and uh it, it was it wasn't that spicy to be honest but it was okay it was okay flavor but even just the cochinita uh, the pork itself had enough kind of chili enough seasoning enough richness and it was very very moist that you know i was able to just eat them without the additional salsas and just like that i mean i was just one biting them that's kind of how i eat tacos generally um, and i really like this i love tacos out of our 23 days in mexico there was i think only two days that we did not have tacos so that just kind of goes to show you know how um we'll say uh invest it into the tacos or how high of an item i see tacos um but yeah very much enjoying them and then like i said just returning to our uh you know steamed vegetables but i did put another couple uh items to order so the ones that i liked additionally again and i ordered again were the um, cochinita babil again that was great and i wanted to try the other uh main entree which i didn't have the first time which was called the lamitas lamitas the via de lead via de lead, or lamitas of via de lead. so let's get to that um because that is a uh, that is an item definitely worth mentioning but like i said this cochinita babil very very good liked it a lot and uh it made great tacos um, very very good tacos i did put a little bit of lime on it um just because some people but, I mean, that's actually kind of the more traditional way. Um, a lot of Mexican cuisine has a lot of lime in it, and especially people like putting lime on a lot of the pork dishes, whether it being El Pastor, whether it being the Cochinita Pabil, um, whether it being tacos in general. Now, I, admittingly, I'm not the biggest lime person, but there's a time and a place for it. And I love it in like a pico de gallo. I love it in a salsa. It's in a lot of the salsas, etc. So like I said, there's definitely a time and a place. So here I got another uh, pork chuck, and this is the lamitas, which they serve with refried beans and an egg. So these lamitas, guys, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. First off, just look at it. Beautiful, beautiful looking dishes. So how would I describe these lamitas? Well, first off, it was pork. I would say it was like, it was, so it was like a chopped pork, a cubed pork, which was definitely cooked in like a moist method. So it was very, very soft. Um, it was like a, I'd say like a bra so here, I'll break it down further. All right, to put it out there, braised soft pork in little cubes in a kind of tomato and chili sauce. The gentleman told me it was spicy. I would almost disagree. If there was spice, it was like a five per one to five percent. And I didn't find it spicy at all. Um, and I really, really, really liked it. This was definitely the favorite entree I had. Um, again, with the refried beans, great way to uh, eat it with a taco. I love refried beans. Um, it could taste it great on the tortilla, taste it great without the tortilla, so, but I definitely, that was my favorite dish. There was so much flavor in it. Um, you know, the Lamitas of Valle de Lead, I'm not sure if, well, I mean, it's obviously a dish of Valle de Lead, um, so I call that a very regional, traditional dish, I'm assuming by that name, um, but I will say I love the flavor, guys. Like I said, chili, tomato, almost reminded me of like a stewed meat in a way, like a very thick stewed meat where, you know, kind of the liquids, um, 
you know, almost cooked onto the meat. Um, so, and I loved it so much, I got another one. Um, I was literally just eating it with like a fork, with a spoon. It was just great. Um, loved the flavor. Again, very heavy, a lot of oils in it, but I think that was pretty much for all the dishes. I also did get another mole. Like I said, it was solid. I had no complaints with it. Um, it was just, you know, like not the absolute best mole I ever had, but that didn't mean it was still, or didn't mean it was not good. I'll use this time to give a shout out to the staff. The staff were excellent. They were so cool. And like I said, I was really worried about going to get slow plated because it was super slow to start off. But they, once I guess they saw that I was eating it, they were enjoying it. Man, they just kept the food rolling. Um, you know, and I ordered lots of stuff. Like, you know, I'm ordering multiple, multiple entrees. Like each one of these is an entree. They would anticipate, you know, the average person probably get one of these. You know, I was getting... I don't know, 10, I had 10 entrees or something at this point, maybe even more. Um, like I said, I started off with five and since then I've definitely had, I guess, another five. Um, but yeah, I love this Lamitas, loved the pork. Like I said, it was so well seasoned. It was almost like it was pork cooked in like a salsa. Like that's almost the way I'd put it. Like just excellent. Um, really loved it. Ordered some more steamed vegetables. Like I said, guys, all about them vegetables, all about repping that health guys and uh, you know, just enjoying it. Very good. Very rich. Ooh, heavy food. And I have to pay for each of these water bottles, so. Now that was the one thing which definitely could have made the experience a little better, is that if the water bottles, or at least water or some kind of liquid was included, and no, I couldn't have gotten like, trust me, if I could have just got a glass of water or whatever, I would have. Um, just because instead of having to spend um, literally about $10 on water, I would have much rather have given them that, you know, like tipped them that or something. Because like I said, it was, uh, the staff was great. Um, the food is coming out very nicely prepared, nicely presented, very tasty. Um, so that's the only kind of thing that I would mention in that regard. So I definitely enjoyed this last Lamitas as well. Like I said, definitely a very flavorful dish, very beautiful dish. Um, honestly, like I said, all these dishes were great. The biggest thing was they were just salty, heavy, and like I said, I had limited water, even though I ordered about three or four water bottles. Um, it was just a little bit more water would have made this a little easier. But uh, yeah, that was the entrees, and uh, I really liked it. So honestly, all that was really, really, really good. I was very impressed. Um, I would say, my favorites were the uh, Lamitos, which I actually didn't get till the end, but it was like a seasoned pork. Um, second would probably be the uh, Cochinita Pabil. Um, the mole was solid as well. The uh, steamed vegetables or steamed vegetables are pretty good. The first one I had was a lot more seasoned than the other ones, but it was good nonetheless. Out of the appetizers, they were all okay. I think it was this chai Chaitas. That was the best. It was like a cooked, uh, kind of like a cooked vegetable. It reminded me of uh, one of those like eggplant dishes. I forget what they're, they're in a lot of cuisines. I kind of forget what it's called. And now, yeah, desserts. So we got two of each. We got two of the flan of the house, two of the coconut cream. You know I love coconut. And two of the rice puddings. So, arroz con leche, rice and milk, or dairy. I'm actually not that messy, surprisingly. So it's all been really good so far. Got another water coming, my third one, and uh, some more desserts. Here we have a coconut cream, it's sort of like a gelatin, but coconut. We have the flan, looks good. And then the arrows come niche, the rice pudding, with some uh, raisins or dates on top. I have a big sweet tooth, I love desserts. So if you're still watching this point, hit that like button if you like desserts. And if you don't, comment down below and let me know why you don't like desserts. It's actually more like the texture of like a yogurt. So the coconut cream wasn't bad. Um, it was definitely like a, I don't know, kind of a, basically like a coconut yogurt, kind of jello. It was kind of, it was, it was, it was interesting, it wasn't bad. That's really good. That's probably the best right here. And the flavor of the coconut, eh, it seemed a little like kind of artificial, if that makes sense. Um, whereas that flan, holy jumpets, that flan was dang good. That was actually probably the best flan I had in Mexico. And flan is definitely a thing we had a number of times in Mexico. It seems to be a pretty um, common and popular dish. Rice pudding seems to be very common and popular as well, as we've seen in a number of different places, the arroz con liche, and um, I like it. It was pretty good. 
But the flan was definitely the star of the show from these desserts. Like, a thousand percent, it was very, very, very good, and I knew I definitely had to get a little bit more. I'm thinking a few more flans for sure. Really good. Still need to get that water. So like I said, I really like the flans. So I decided to order five more. And one more coconut cream, but the flan is the real king today. Oh, and I got the water. So like I said, I was really digging the flan, and like, I just, oh, like, I would, I would eat way more too. They must think I'm crazy here. I can see them talking, like, in the camera. Like, right there. So I can only imagine what they're thinking or saying. Probably wondering where I'm putting it. I will say, it's definitely worth going back and watching this video again, focusing on those gentlemen. So, like, they came over, I kind of was aware of this from the corner of my camera, but it's really funny to watch back. So the gentlemen kind of come over, and they, like, are tr obviously trying not to make it look like they're watching me, but they peer over, like, their shoulder at me every so often. Um, anyway, let me know down below if you think they were there particularly watching me or taking uh, taking hold of me, or at least considering me at all. Maybe they weren't, maybe they were ignoring me, maybe they were just standing there. But let me know down below what you think, because I think it's pretty funny the way they were acting. All right, that was delicious. Very much enjoyed that, guys. <laughs> it was actually a lot better than I expected. Not that I had low expectations, but this was really, really good. Those flans were great. The lamitas was really good, that pork. I think those are my two top picks of the day. So everybody, hope you enjoyed this video. Huge thanks again to our friend Alex. So that, guys, hope you enjoyed the unlimited, the endless Mexican food here, guys. I really did. Could I eat more? Yeah, I have to go, I have to go though. So I hope you enjoyed the endless Mexican food here today, guys. I really did. It was very, very delicious. So everybody, until next time, happy, I'll be hungry. Happy eating. Don't do what I do, of course. Get yourself some good food. Eat normally. Not like this. And uh, that's about it, guys. Have a lovely day. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed all this video. Lots of Mexican footage is within here. We've had a great trip in Mexico. One of our last days, unfortunately. Gotta head back to the cold up in Canada. That's it, everybody. Until next time, you rock. I love you. Thank you so much. And that's it. Just much love. I appreciate you. Know that. Know you're special. Know you're amazing. Know you're valued. Know your worth. I love you. Until next time. Anyway, just made it home. I totally forgot to kind of do a little more of an outro. But guys, seriously, huge thanks to the staff. The staff were great. I was really worried it was going to be slow played it because things were starting off really, really, really slow. But guys, by the end of it, they were just kicking that up. Everything I asked for, they delivered. Uh, I, it definitely took a while and a lot of confusion for you know me to be able to be like, yeah, like I want three of the chicken moles plus two other entrees. Like to order five entrees off the start, they were a little... They thought there was a language, they, th they thought there was um, some miscommunication, but no, I, honestly, great experience. Having a huge shout out to them, huge shout out to the, uh, my server, especially great guy. Um, so that's about it, guys. Really enjoyed it overall, no complaints. And uh, I would definitely recommend it if you're ever invited to leave, just stop on by there. Really nice people, great spot. So here we are get back in our home country, we gotta get PCR tested, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Should I smile? <laughs> I make I make uh, I make videos so I figured I uh, I should I figured I'd record it for fun. I, I hope not to have to get tested too many times, right? Okay. Now I will do the Okay. Okay, breathe deeply please. Okay. Okay. Now I'm Okay, breathe deeply. Breathe. Okay, so. Woo! Ooh. That feels funny. <laughs> You're the first person that I hear. That's the that it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> hey everyone, so here we are guys. We are officially in now in Puerto Morales, but this is not the Puerto Morales most people are used to seeing. We're at a place called San Carlos Mayan Resort. And essentially guys, we're literally in a hut in the jungle. Like this is about as, I don't want to say like rural or, this, this, this is it. This is the, uh, we'll call it um, about as authentic as an experience you can get while still being offered 
you know, buy like a resort, not actually just staying out in the jungle. This place is absolutely crazy, but why? I'll show you around the place after. First, show what we're eating. So, this is how our meals have looked like. I, uh, I have my four bottles of hot sauce. I generally go through a bottle like this size in two days. Yes, I've eaten an absurd amount of hot sauce. My sodium content has probably been about 12 grams a day. I kid you not. So, here we got a lovely uh, kind of like bean, peppers, tomatoes, mushrooms, etc. This is the same with rice and uh, chorizo. And we got some lovely looking chicken breast with some hot sauce on that as well. I'm gonna be drinking these bottles of hot sauce as we come along. Then we got some lovely tortillas. One thing I like about Mexico, the corn tortillas are everywhere. These are yellow and Amarillo corn tortillas. And uh, I'm just gonna make some tacos and eat all that good stuff out of it. So, I'm excited. I haven't eaten all day. I'm ready to eat. Kayla, you hungry? Oh yeah. So let's eat all this delicious looking food out in the jungle. Then I'll show you the house. All right, just finished up dinner. Very, very good. Pretty simple, basic, but I love it. We also had a uh, lovely grapefruit to finish. I had about a quarter of each of these bottles of hot sauce right here, about a quarter of that one. So we're about three, and well, a little bit of that one too. So almost, a, I guess in totality, almost a bottle of hot sauce with that meal. Again, guys, I love, like people think I don't like spice. It's not true. I like spice. A lot like casually I love hot sauces like I said I go through a bottle about every two days that being said I don't like like ghost peppers and especially when it's quantity quantity is totally different than like leisurely same as like if you watch me eat like at the golden corral or one of my buffets I love hot sauce love that stuff so let's show you inside now so heading on in to the casa so it is definitely like at first it looks pretty basic pretty simplistic I guess you could say pretty simple Got a big old bed, nice old California king. But look at these like woodwork. So this is like logs they hauled out, then they burn, made into shelves. We have this like ceiling, like it's visibly like a hut. Again, supposed to be quote unquote Mayan um, kind of style. Basically, you know, I mean, we have real trees as uh, you know support beams. In the ground, not on the cement, but they have actual like peat log pieces, which is kind of cool. They just kind of sliced a log, give it a little bit of decoration. So it's pretty simple, but it's pretty unique because who else and how many times can you say you stayed in the middle of a jungle? Screen door, not locking though, I will say, just kind of weird. Apparently, there's a TV. Then we have outside. When I look outside the window, I feel like I'm at a zoo. But like somewhere like that, because like it's actually plexiglass, and it's just just a jungle outside, like legit. You'd have expect to see, you know, I don't know, some tigers, or like a gorilla, or you know, expect to see something of that nature and capacity. Out here in the jungle at Casa Fernanda, it's pretty cool. No monkeys yet. Maybe we'll see him at some point. Also have a little uh, dream catcher there. Have this heart thingy thing with a light. This place I think will look really, really cool at nighttime. Either it'll look really cool or it won't look different at all. So there's a big squirrel over there. Um, the place as well it does have like a small cenote on uh, the property. They also have a couple of chameleons as pets. They have um, the turtles and fish in the cenote. Um, they also have like a fish pond as well. I'm not sure if they're eating them. They actually could eat them. They look like they're fish made for eating. They have a large variety of uh, different um, animals, being like turkeys, ducks, geese, um, all that they definitely use for eating. And some I think just for pets, but definitely some for eating. And they, they do have a restaurant here, and I guess that's part of their food. So pretty interesting. You will get to see definitely some of the rest of this. But we're gonna head downtown Port Morales. We're gonna try to see some of that. No complaints. So, oh, and I'll show you the bathroom real quick. So come on in the place, come to the bathroom. This is probably the coolest part of the place. Look at it. The bathroom looks also like a jungle because it kind of is. Look at this, the shower, there's no roof. <laughs> that is right. So you're literally showering with an open top in the trees, it's really cool. So if you shower at night, you're showering with the moon and the stars and probably the bugs. But if you shower in the day, you get a beautiful morning, you get the birds. And again, I really like the way they just uh, made this whole bathroom. This is a little corral, just very, 
aesthetic looking. So kudos on the bathroom, y'all. And as you can see, it's pretty bright. Got my got my morning hair on, guys. Got my big etchy. Put it down. It's pretty good. I get some good volume. Good volume in the morning. But here we're gonna show you this property out in the jungle. There's our little hot thingy thing. So this is kind of the main area. Um, we have some big, huge plants, of course. Here is a little, uh, I guess like a restaurant and bar they have on site here. Here is the cenote, which is essentially just an accumulation of water. This one I don't actually think is a genuine cenote. I think it's just technically a man-made um, pool. I'll put it that way. But there are uh, turtles. There's a turtle. And there are some fish in here as well. We also have a, uh, I don't know, people are doing some yoga. There's this little cool shrine-ish area over here. Seashells and a upside down tree with a rock on it. So that's pretty unique. Kind of a hip place, I guess you could say. Come over here. Here we got more fish. These are the fish I queer if they eat, to be honest. And they're obviously very used to getting fed. And that guy looks like a, I don't know, a gar or something of some sort. Then we have over here. Here's uh, all their chickens and turkeys and ducks and all their kind of wildlife. There's a whole bunch of them over there, if you can see. Uh, there's some guinea fowl in there too, which are all pretty cool. Again, I'm feeling these are, some of these guys definitely get eaten, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, this says, uh, something, we have two homes, earth and your body, please take care. Actually, that's a, that's a pretty cool, uh, that's a pretty cool saying. Never really thought of it like that. They have a hammock over the, uh, what they call cenote or the pond, so that's kind of cool. A third little body of water. Oh, we got more fish in there. Don't know if it's connected or not. Smaller fish. And then as we continue over here, here we have some like more different hut things there and over there. Um, they call them casas, like houses. The rest of the houses on this property are actually smaller. We have the biggest and most substantial one. The rest of them are mm, more vertical. Like my, ours is more like an actual kind of um, what I would call like a cabin or a house or a hut. <clears throat> like a hut, I don't want to say hut. More like a cabin, I guess. Um, whereas some of the, the other ones are kind of more, um, they're taller, they're more almost like a bunk bed system. Like it's this very, very small um, two floor, which the majority just basically being the, uh, the two beds. So we did actually kind of pick the biggest one. Um, I'm not sure what that means. Observe uh, and respect. I don't know, guys. My Spanish is not that good. Something and observe and respect or something. Um, here we have peacocks. In there we have what I would say is definitely a. Uh, I'm gonna say it's a wild bird. Um, he, you see the yellow um, beak uh, and the black feathers because he's fully caged up and he is very, very um, squeamish, or as you can see, very, very afraid. So I think he was totally a wild bird, whereas, you know, the peacocks I definitely think are, you know, they're quite domesticated. This black bird with the yellow beak, I think is totally, uh, totally wild. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. That's most of the property. Again, just over here. We have some more of the uh, more of the geese and stuff squawking away. Some big old roosters. Heard these guys crowing this morning. Turkeys, guinea fowl. These are guinea fowl right here, guys. A lot of people probably don't know what guinea fowl are, but I actually used to uh, I used to have some when I was growing up. Um, back in the day, I had some chickens and ducks, and I had some guinea fowl. So that's basically the property here at San Carlos, Mayan whatever's. Not sponsored or and nothing like that. I'm paying for all this out of my own money. But I thought it was a really unique place. Um, 
unfortunately, this is our last day in Mexico, which sucks. Uh, but yeah, so Puerto Morales, um, it's, I don't know, like we went downtown last night. I didn't really get any footage, it was very dark, but it was interesting. Uh, it looks like a very small, kind of beachy-ish, watery, maybe more like, again, like kind of watery, boatish. But yeah, so we're gonna have a great day, I sure hope. Um, enjoy this last day in Mexico. I gotta go also look and make sure our flights and everything are still looking. There have been a lot of uh, flight changes getting back into Canada and a lot of different restrictions and all that such. We had to get our PCR tests and uh, all that crazy stuff. So yeah, that's about it though. Um, here's some aloe. Aloe basically grows everywhere here, big plants of it, where it's funny, it's North America, it's very highly sought after and desired. But everybody, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, look at these places here. Let's go do some more footage of our day, and crazy that it's the last day, but Mexico's been really great, guys. Mexico's a really cool place, and it's been a very relaxing trip overall. It's been leisure, I haven't had a leisure trip like this in forever. And that's about it. So uh, we'll get to the rest of the day. I've been drinking a lot of these um, like flavor packets, kind of like the equivalent to like Crystal Light or whatever. Um, this one is a uh, melon or cantaloupe flavor. It's very, very good. Very good. So yeah, guys, uh, the only other thing later, hopefully I'll get a shower and this is place. So here on the beach in Porto Morales, it's uh, at least this area. This is the main kind of Porto Playa, like Playa Porto, at least what Google says. It's definitely a little seaweedy. The boats are really close in. Water's a little rough today, a little windy, but it looks pretty nice. We've got the nice sands, got some definitely blue waters out there by on the seaweed. I wonder if more. Uh... And this is where we decided to camp out. Again, a little windy, but it is a nice looking thingy thing. And when the weather is 27 degrees or something like that, and it's sunny, we're about to return to Canada. I'm not complaining. everyone well we are officially at the Cancun airport unfortunately leaving Mexico the weather has been great by the way this is a huge airport they have a Guy Fieri restaurant they have a Johnny Rockets they have it everything but yeah so pretty cool Mexico has been fun the weather has been again fantastic and that's what I'm gonna miss the most besides going to some place which is locked down and Everything's closed and I'm gonna be a prisoner. I'm definitely not excited for the cold weather. But that, I can't ask for a better trip. It all turned out. No complaints. So with that, let's go catch a flight. Hopefully no big issues. Last time I'm turning from Mexico, I had, uh, I had some real connecting issues and almost missed my flight. So that was a little interesting, but this will be good. So let's figure this stuff out and make it work in one moment. Right here. We are about at our gate now. I like it. Everyone here on a layover at the CLT Charlotte Airport, guys. And I've actually never had Chick-fil-A before. I've never, ever, ever had Chick-fil-A. Blows people mind when I tell them that. So I got two spicy chicken sandwiches to try. I guess it's also known as the number three. So don't know how this will compare as this is at an airport. Not sure this will be up to the normal standards of Chick-fil-A. Again, I've never had it. But this is the, uh, that's what it looks like there. I guess that's a pickle underneath it. Got some ketchup and hot sauce. You know I'm all about that jam. So let's give her a try. I gotta dress it up though, and it's some ketchup and hot sauce action. Update, so I think she gave me the normal chicken sandwiches, not the spicy one. It tastes good. I did try a bite. I was gonna capture it on camera, but I was a little, uh, kind of got a little sidetracked with my Receipt saying I didn't get the spicy ones. But here's the uh, hot sauce.
It was good. But I need to go, go try to get a spicy one. Update, I now have two spicy chicken sandwiches, hopefully, and they told me to keep the other ones. We're gaining chicken by the minute. And that looks so much better, guys. Look at that. that's my spicy chicken. I'm gonna try it just without the uh, sauce. I like it. A little bit spicy with the heat, not like, not like spicy. More just like a flavor. I like it. That's good. Very delicious. I also got some Chick Fil A sauce. I'm gonna bust open here. Don't know what it is. But the ingredients make it sound like it's mayonnaise and barbecue sauce. Chick fil A sauce. Ooh, that's delicious. Mm. Would recommend. So, ironically, I get to try the spicy one and the regular one today. I like them both. I'm gonna dress them up with some hot sauce though and enjoy them. Thanks. Overall impression Chick-fil-A, definitely not bad. I did like the spicy one a little better than the original, but they had a different flavor profile. The original just tasted like a really nice seasoned piece of chicken. The spicy one had a little bit more of a spice, duh. But uh, you know what I'm saying. That being said, it was solid. And but and I will take, I'll consider this from the airport too. So, you know, not too bad. It's worth a shot, it's worth trying. So I tried it, there it goes, I had Chick-fil-A. I had Chick-fil-A. Closing on Sundays. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you click my face right here, you can subscribe. Yes, that's right, click my face, subscribe guys. It helps me out, it helps you out, then you don't miss an upload, and hopefully I can meet you when I come to your city. Also, click a video right here. I specifically picked two videos, yes, that's right, two videos specifically for you, right here. So click a video right now, get that going, and it's gonna end, so click one quick. Let's go, let's go, and have a great day.